All right, so we're going to go through some injury proofing, some movement prep movements uh, first. Uh, we're going to break it into three kind of sections. The first section is going to focus on kind of the lower shank, the, the foot, the ankle area. So you can see Lauren is working on just some myofascial release work, it's called. So you can use a lacrosse ball. You can use a golf ball if you're brave enough. You can use a tennis ball. Uh, so we have a tennis ball and a lacrosse ball here. There's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason as far as what you need to do as long as you get basically the whole base of the foot. And all you're doing is just rolling around, applying some pressure on that foot. Uh, make sure you get into the arch, get, on the, get through the end of the toes, get on that heel as well. Anywhere that might feel tender uh, or tight or sore. Uh, so what this is doing basically is just kind of promoting some blood flow, bringing some... Uh, some blood flow to that area to help kind of loosen up and activate uh, the muscles and uh, tissues of that, that foot, okay? So that's number one there. I would do about thir just 30 seconds or so per foot is fine, okay? So that's number one. Uh, the next one, and again, we're just going to focus on a few movements for the feet and ankles here. So the next one is some balance work. So let me back us up a little bit. So we're going to do five balance touches uh, on the left leg first. So go ahead. So what we're doing, we're bending at the hip and the knee. It's primarily, it's more of a hip hinge. Perfect, there you go. Uh, and what we're trying to do is have both hands touch the ground, come all the way down, and then come all the way up straight. The other foot, so in this case, uh, Lauren's right foot, ultimately we're trying to keep it off the ground the whole time. Of course, if you start to lose balance, <laughs> you can uh, tap that foot to the ground to regain yourself. But again, ultimately we're trying to keep that other guy off the ground the whole time. So we're just going to have Lauren do a few, but typically what you'd want to do, again, bend at the knee and primarily bend at the hip, just like she's doing, is do, I would say, 8 to 10 on one side and then switch and get 8 to 10 on the other side. All right, that's good. So that's the balance reach, uh, sorry, balance touch. This next one's called a balance reach. So you can see what she's going to do. Same setup. This one also a slight bend in the knee and then a big bend in the hip. And what she's doing, she's extending that back leg out and extending that <laughs> those arms out. Uh, forward. So at the end of the movement, right there, perfect, good, come back. You want to be as close to parallel with the ground as you can. So you can see her leg, her arms, her whole body is really pretty parallel to that ground, which is perfect. Show two more on the side, yep. And just like the balance touch, you want to try and keep that left foot off the ground the whole time, okay? And I would shoot for eight to ten reps on each side. Good. Why don't you show a few of the balance touches with the, uh, the blue pad there. So this is called an Airx pad. If you don't have an Airx pad, there's all sorts of other things. There's the Bosu ball, which is that half blue dome. There's Dyna disc, which are firm, uh, firm pads as well. So you can see how much more challenging uh, this movement is when we just add that, that pad. So all that is, it's an unstable pad, so it provides more instability, which requires more stability throughout the body. Good. So the, the benefit of that, one more. Good. The benefit of the, this pad is uh, we're just getting more firing through the, those, the small intrinsic muscles of the feet and the ankles, which, again, is a way to strengthen those muscles, which we all know are super important to help protect the, the ankle joint and, and uh, protect against sprains. Good. So last one, let's do the three-point touch without the, uh, the pad. So this last one we're going to show for the, the feet and the ankles is going to be a three-point touch. So... Uh, you're gonna, she's going to reach back as far as she can with that foot and then just tap the ground, then come back to center. Then she's going to reach out to the side as far as she can and just barely tap the ground. So like I was telling uh, Lauren earlier, think you're surrounded by a bunch of eggs and you don't want to break the eggs. So it's just a little bit of a tap. So it's three-point touch. It's reach back as far as you can and tap, reach out to the side as far as you can and tap, and then reach forward as far as you can and tap. Good. And this one I would go through three rounds. So it would end up being eight, uh, nine taps total. So one to the back, one to the side, one to the front, and repeat that three times. Got it? <laughs> Good. Rest. Good. All right. Part two for the movement prep or injury proof section here is going to be some T-spine or upper back and uh, shoulder movements. So we're going to do two more mobility drills or two stretches first. So this first exercise is called a reach through. So what Lauren's going to do is take that right arm, reach it through, and then a big twist at the top. So she reaches through with that arm. She's gonna, you can bend that left arm slightly, but you want to make sure it stays straight. So as she reaches through, that left arm slightly bends. And then at the top of that movement, 
Uh, she's going to turn, twist, and really try. She's trying to open up the shoulders there at that top. So she's looking up towards the ceiling, opening up the shoulders and getting that hand nice and high at the top. Just one, one more. Perfect. Good. All right. So that's number one. Number two, she's going to come up onto a knee. Hands are going to go behind her head in what we call a prisoner position. Hopefully she's not familiar with this position. <laughs> uh, and what's she, what she going to do? I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see what she's going to do. Perfect. So she has her left foot forward, okay? So what she's going to do with her, uh, with her torso or upper body, she's going to turn to the left as far as she can. There, good. And then I want you to tilt the left elbow down, right elbow goes up. Good. And then come center and then turn a little bit more. Nope. So go again. Yeah, now tilt. Good, come back up. Tilt a little bit more, or twist a little bit more. Good. Tilt. And then go one more time. See if you can turn a little bit more. Beautiful. Perfect. And then let's show the other side so we can see it this way. So as she's going, I'm just going to go through it real quick. So she, you're turning towards the front leg. So in this case, she's turning towards her right. Once she turns as far as she can, she's going to bend so that bot, the, uh, right elbow goes towards the ground and the left elbow goes towards the sky. Then she straightens herself up and tries to turn a little bit more. And then she does it one more time. So you're going to do three kind of turn and tilts on each side. So you twist, tilt, twist, tilt, twist, tilt. So it's three per side, okay? And when you're done, you should definitely feel kind of a stretch in the sides, the lats, and through the shoulders. All right, so those are the two more stretches, the, those reach-throughs with one arm and then those kneeling tilts. The two stability movements we're going to do for the shoulder. First one's called a shoulder tap. So what you're going to do, you're going to be in a push-up position. So I want a neutral spine, which Lauren's showing right there. The hips aren't too low, they're not too high. So nice neutral spine. And then what you're going to you're going to brace your abs and you're going to tap your hand to your opposite shoulder. A couple keys here is what I mentioned before. You want to keep the body in a nice neutral position. And you also want to minimize how much you shift the hips. So you don't want to have super shifty hips here. You want to brace that core. The hips will shift, but you want to try to minimize it. Okay, so that's really going to force you to activate those abs and that core. So you can see how Lauren's hips are just moving just a little bit, which is perfect. Uh, on this one, I would do 20 total. So it'll be 10 per side. Uh, just nice, consistent pace. You don't want to fly through them. Just hand to opposite shoulder in a nice, consistent tempo. Uh, and then the last one, you're going to be on your side. We're going to do some, some of those side plank hip hikes there. So in this last one, you're going to stack all your joints. So your ankles, knees, hips are going to form a nice straight line. And a key here on that left elbow and left shoulder, I want in a nice straight line. So I don't want her elbow way too far into her body or way too, too far out. So they're in a nice straight line. And then all you're going to do, top hand goes on the hip. You're going to activate that side and that shoulder and lift that top hip as high as you can towards the ceiling. I would go 10 reps on this and then obviously we'd do both sides. A key on this one, other than trying to keep that body nice and straight, is making sure, in this case, her right elbow, or right shoulder rather, keep the shoulder away from the ear. So when people start to get tired, that shoulder is going to start creeping up towards the neck and towards the ear, which kind of cramps the, the, those muscles up, those overactive traps. So we want to make sure you just think about keeping some separation between the shoulder and the ear. Okay? All right, gang. So part three. So we did ankles and feet. We did the upper back, T-spine and shoulders. And this last third and final step of the injury proof section is the hips and glutes, which is possibly the most important. So we definitely want to focus on this area as far as injury prevention goes uh, and, and activating those glutes properly. So we're going to do two stretches first, just like the shoulders, two stretches and then a couple movements to kind of activate uh, the, the, these muscles that we're working on. So the first one is called a squat to stand. So you can see Lauren has a slightly toed out stance, which is fine. I don't want it to be too excessive, but a slight toe out is fine. Uh, her feet are slightly wider than shoulder width. So what she's going to do, part one, I'm going to have her, she's going to bend down and grab her toes. Part two is to think about actively pulling her hips down as low as she can and trying to show her chest to us. Yep, trying to get the shoulders up. That's actually really good. That's better than <laughs> we did the first time. So from this position here, she probably has a pretty deep uh, inner thigh groin stretch. Now the, uh, now the next step is to lift one arm up as high as you can. So just think about getting your arm near your ear. Then the other hand, stay low, and then stand up straight. Good. So show one more of those. So we're working on a lot of things. So this right here is a deep, yeah, a deep inner thigh groin stretch. 
So again, actively pull your hips down as low as you can and try to get the chest up. So if she was wearing a uniform, I'd say, show your numbers. So you want to try to show your numbers. Good. And then see how her arms were right by her ears? That was perfect. So on that one, you would do uh, five repetitions of that. That one is a slow and controlled movement where when you pull your hips down, I want you to sit in that bottom position for a good five seconds and think about trying to drive your knees apart to really open up those hips. All right, so that's number one, the squat, the stand. Number two is an instep stretch. So what she's going to do, she's going to walk her hands out to like a push-up position. And then with her right foot, she's going to take a big step with that right foot to bring it to the outside of the right hand. Okay, you can see the back leg is active, so the knee's off the ground. She's just thinking about sinking her hips down, and then I want her to lower that knee, or that elbow rather, as close to the ground as you can. Okay, some people can get there. We can see this is a work in progress. <laughs> So, and I want her to sit there for about five seconds. Think about two breaths. So you want to make sure you breathe with these stretches too. Then after that, she's going to push her hips back up to like a downward dog. Think of a yoga pose. So her hips are going high and she's pressing those heels towards the ground. So she's going to get a nice calf Achilles stretch. And then she's going to come out, take a big step with the left foot to the outside of the left hand. And then same thing. She's sinking her hips down and she's going to bring that left elbow as close to the ground as she can. Perfect. And then she'd push back. So this would be like almost like a flow. Uh, and I would do five per side. So it'll be 10 total. Big step, right foot, elbow to the ground, two breaths. Then she'll push back into that downward dog yoga pose. And then she'll step, left foot comes up. Okay, and she'll just flow back and forth till she hits 10. So again, five per side. All right, so those are the two really good stretches for the groin, the hips, the glutes. Now what we're going to do, we're going to add this little guy here, the, the bands. There's a couple different bands that are available. Which I just have some green ones here. So these, to start, are going to go around the hips. Now this is just going to be a good old-fashioned bridge movement, which is great for glute activation. So we want to, a lot of people have for lack of a better term, kind of a dead butt. So we want to try to turn that butt on and, and wake it up. The glutes are very important for ankle, especially for knee protection. We want to have active, strong glutes to protect the knee. So what we're going to do here, she's, she put that band around uh, the, uh, right above the knees, feet are about hip width apart, and all she's going to do is go into a hip extension. She's lift the hips nice and high, Squeeze and then come right back down. Good. So go keep going as I'm um, going through this real quick. The feet are going to stay flat on the ground. And I want her to think about actively pressing through the heels. So make sure and the feet can stay flat. But I just want to think you to think about pressing through the heels as she extends those hips. She's also really squeezing the glutes at the top of the movement. The purpose of the band, the band is trying to press the, pull the knees together. So she needs to actively press the knees away from each other. Therefore, activating some, some uh, glute muscles, some lateral glute uh, muscles in, in the hip area, uh, some of the AB ductors. So those are really important for injury prevention to, to get those strong. All right, so that one there, I would do is 15 repetitions. Then she's going to lower that band right above the ankles, so down to the ankles, and we're going to go through three movements. We'll just have Lauren do a couple reps of each. So first one is a lateral band walk. So what she's going to do here, have a slight bend in the hips and knees, chest is up, and then she's going to just take some side steps. Good. It's just short. They don't have to be super big steps. It's just slow and controlled, making sure the toes stay straight the whole time. We don't want that toe to turn out just like that. That's, that happens a lot if you don't have the proper uh, activation of the hips and the glutes. The quad muscles want to take over, and that's when that foot's going to turn out. So for this one, if you have, if you're doing this on a court, I would do from baseline to, to foul line and back uh, is good. <clears throat> so anywhere about 15 feet is, is, is fine for those. So that's number one. So again, that's a lateral band walk. Number two is going to be a, a zigzag step. So same setup, slight bend in the hips and knees. And this time she's going to step out at a 45 degree angle. She's going to bring that other foot in, quick tap, and then drive out. Good. So you can see the 45 degree angles that she's doing. And again, the toes are staying forward. Once you get that 15 feet, you're going to reverse it. So she's leading with the heel as she backs on up. Bring the foot in and out, in and out. Perfect. Good. So that's number two. The last one, she's going to get her feet nice and wide. So there's some good tension on that band. There's two goals here, to keep that width the whole time and, again, not to have the feet turn out. So she's trying to keep those toes pointed straight to the camera the whole time. So it's kind of a funny-looking, short, choppy, penguin-type walk. 
So she's going to walk forward 15 feet and then walk backwards 15 feet, just like that. And after those, you should definitely feel the glutes burning. Good. All right, gang. So this, this section is going to be talking about speed. Uh, we're going to do two drills on acceleration specifically, uh, and then one drill, which is extremely important, on deceleration. And we're going to cover uh, some braking mechanics. Uh, three of the main causes for some injuries, specifically ACL, are uh, change of direction, landing, and deceleration. So we're definitely going to cover this deceleration piece. Make sure you guys get it down good. Uh, but first, the two acceleration drills. So this first one is a great drill that you can do just about anywhere. If you're on a basketball court, you can have uh, everyone lined up on the baseline. And what we're going to do, it's called a falling start. So what Lauren's going to do, she's in position. She's going to start standing, just normal position. She's going to sh shift her weight forward, come up on the balls of the feet. And then I want her to f literally fall forward and not break at the hip. So actually, will you show an improper one first? Okay. So comes up, and then see how she shifted, on the ball, uh, shifted the weight forward and broke the, at the hips? That's what we don't want. So see how, the, again, we don't want to break at the hips. You want to shift your weight forward, come up on the balls of the feet, and the whole body stays one nice straight line, and you're going to fall forward as far as you can. So go ahead and do one real time. Okay. Weight forward, shifts, and then she accelerates out. Perfect. So fast, I can't even keep her on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, it's called a falling start. So you just shift weight, boom, and accelerate out. And as far as the acceleration goes, it just needs to be, I mean, we don't have a huge space here, but it, you don't need one. We're working on that initial acceleration. So I would just accelerate four or five steps, and then you can slow it down and walk it back. So this would be a good drill to do, I'd say, about 10 times. So you, again, the keys are start in a normal stand-up tall, tall position, excuse me, shift the weight forward, make sure you don't break at the hips, and you're just going to fall forward as far as you can until you need to bring one leg, opposite arm forward, and accelerate out for three or four steps, Then you can walk it back and repeat. Again, and do this one ten times and really focus on keeping the body nice and straight and driving that arm and opposite leg out. All right, so that's number one. Again, it's called a falling start. Number two is going to be the resisted run. Yep, yep. So for this, <clears throat> we have a number of these acceleration drills that require different equipment. This one just requires a simple piece of tubing or a super band, depending on what you have. I've even done it with towels and things like that. So there's, there's different ways to do it. Um, so what you, we're going to do, we're going to use a, just a traditional piece of tubing that is found in most, most gyms these days. So it's going to go behind or wrap it around the waist and I'm going to come on camera and, and uh, hold Lauren back. But you'll see what we're going to do. I'll explain what we're doing. I'm just going to show you uh, one of them real quick. Right. So when you're ready, stay nice and tall. Good. Pump those legs. Let's go. Good. Driving off the balls of the feet. Good. Do it again. Shoulders up, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to you lean that whole body forward, just like in the, in the acceleration drill, but not break at the hips. Good, 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 good. Good. All right. All right, so what you saw there, just like in the falling start drill, she kind of shifted her weight forward, didn't break at the hips, and then took off. So the person providing the resistance, they're providing some resistance, but not a ton where her form breaks down. We don't want her to break at the hip. So we want to keep that nice, it's called an acceleration lean, acceleration angle, uh, so she can still move that body forward, but we're not pulling her hips back to break that position. All right, That's another one I would like to do. Uh, you could accelerate from baseline to half court. And then you could uh, have the other person kind of switch people. So the person holding the band goes one direction, and then uh, you guys switch head back the other way. Uh, this is a good one to do five or six times each, okay? So those are the two acceleration drills. This last one we're going to do in the speed section is going to be a deceleration drill. And it's just working on kind of like a closeout position. Perfect. So you can just keep going back and forth. And right about there. Perfect. So what we're working on here is braking mechanics. There's a couple keys to consider here. 
when you are, when she's, as she's running in, it's going to be a couple short choppy steps to keep that center of gravity, center of mass, your base of support rather, under control. So she, you can see how she's starting a bit taller, but when you break down, you're going to get a little bit lower and under control. So go again. Good one. Good. So you want to accelerate <clears throat> this one I say if I was coaching her. So I'll, I'll tell you when to break. So go back even further. Because the game, don't go yet. The game of basketball obviously is about reaction, change of direction, that sort of thing. And I guess scoring more points than the other team too, huh? But for this particular drill, I like it to be a reaction drill. So she doesn't know when I'm going to tell her to break down. So go ahead and come forward. Break down. Perfect. Good. Back it up. So you can see how she starts tall, and then she's going to get a bit lower, short choppy steps under control. So at any point when she stops, she could uh, close out on the opponent. She could move to the left, move to the right. She could back up. She could block the shot, whatever she needs to do. So she, you don't want to, when you break down, you don't want to be shifting too far forward, too far left or right. Exactly. So you want to make sure you're under control. All right, ready? I'll do, let's do another one. Go. Break down. Nice, perfect. So right there, she can go left, right, back, forward, jump, whatever she needs to do. Good. Just like that. Perfect. All right, we're on to some agility drills. There are literally thousands of agility drills. We're just going to show you a few in this, these clips. This first one I like just because it doesn't really require any equipment. You can put a a piece of tape down that we did here. You could put a piece of string down. Uh, if you have chalk, write a mark, put, use a line on the court, which would probably be the easiest way if we're doing this on the basketball court. So what we're going to do, a couple forward and backward movements. <clears throat> so agility, basically just a change of direction drills. So for this one here, this first one, we're going to start on two feet, as Lauren's showing. You want to be always think about being quick but under control, always on the balls of the feet. Okay, so what we don't want to do with this drill is really scuff. So hear that? Keep going. Do it. And see, it's hard for her to even do it wrong. <laughs> Perfect. So we want to think about getting over the line. So we're not scuffing the feet. We're picking them up, putting them down. Again, quick but under control. Perfect. So that's forward and back. These are drills that go pretty quick. So ultimately, if you've got someone there with a, with a watch or a timer, if there's a clock there, it's just about a 10 second drill. So you work really hard and quick for 10 seconds, then rest for a little bit and then repeat. I like to do each of these drills two to three times and then move on. So first one's two feet forward and back. The second drill is single leg forward and back. Same thing, about 10 seconds one leg, 10 seconds the other leg. That's good. And then let's do, uh, f let's do one more forward and back. So still face, we'll do a traveling one. So if this tape was longer, of course, if you were like at a follow line, you could do the forward and back, but moving a bit sideways. So forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and then repeat forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Good. So again, that one would be about 10 seconds. So those are all the forward ones. We've got two feet, each single leg, and then a traveling one. Then we'll move to the side and we'll do some sideways ones. Same, same drills. Two feet side to side. Same rules apply. Picking the feet up, putting them down, staying on the balls of the feet. So we did the double leg. We've got the single leg on the right, single leg on the left. This will help expose any imbalances, which is extremely important. If you've got imbalances, that could lead to some injuries down the road. So it's good to work on both sides. And then the side to side hop forward, side to side hop back. One more time. And again, these go through each one twice, about 10 seconds each. All right, next section on the agility uh, section is going to be some ladder drills. There are hundreds of them. We're just going to show you a couple. So first one's the mo most basic ladder drill there is. Uh, for all ladder drills, I want you to be quick again, but under control. I want you on the balls of your feet. And again, moving as fast as possible, but stay under control. If, if you're going too fast, you know, your feet are going to get out of control. You're going to miss, the, miss a, a rung. So... Quick but under control, balls of the feet. So the first one's just going to be one foot per box. Perfect. Run it down, turn around, run it back. So she led with one foot down, led with, lead with the other foot going back, just so you can stay balanced and work both sides. Next one's going to be two feet per box running forward. Okay. So it's short choppy, just like that. Perfect. 
So she led with the right foot going down. She's going to lead with the left foot going back. And if you always, if you definitely have a dominant side, it's good to do both sides because you'll, it'll feel a little awkward, but it's definitely important to work both sides, again, for, for stability and for balance between the, between the sides. Uh, next one, she's going to put both feet in the box and move laterally. Beautiful. So you can see how she's got that weight on the balls of the feet. Same thing back. And she's facing the same direction. So on the way down, it was right foot in first. On the way back, it's left foot in first. That's number three. Number four, she's going to start. She's going to go right foot in, then left foot in, and then come out. So they go in and out, in and out. So this is a lateral movement, but it also includes moving forward and backward, which we obviously do a lot in, in basketball. So we're going to start now. Left foot in. Oh, hang on. Go back. So go left foot in first. Left and then right. So start with the left, left foot, right foot. Left foot, I'll, I'll right foot. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So left, right, left, right, left, right. Yes, there we go. Perfect. Very nice. Good. And then the last one we'll show, so this is number five, is going to be, this is a little more plyometric, low-level plyo movement with a hip turn. Excellent. So she's got right foot going in and left foot going in. And you can see the rotation through her hips there, which is obviously important. Change of direction. So now it's going to be left foot in, then right foot in, then move to the next box. So she hops, both feet hit every box, and then she moves to the next one. Good. My ankle totally almost hit out one of the All right, gang, so we're going to get into some quickness stuff. And, and the main difference between quickness, we use, I'm using a couple different terms, speed, agility, quickness. Quickness really just refers to reacting to a stimulus as quickly as possible. So, so this drill here, I call this the quickness box, uh, not my term. but So this is referred to as the quickness box, I should say. So we've got it about four or five steps uh, apart, okay, created a box. Lauren's right in the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, to start, I'm going to give her a, a, a visual cue. I'm going to point to a cone. She's, her goal is to get to that cone, touch the cone with her hand, and then get back to the center as fast as possible. Okay, this is a pretty short space, so at no point do I want her, if I'm the man with the ball, I don't want her to turn away from the ball. She's, she's always looking, she always sees the ball, or her opponent, in this case me. So she, it's more of a shuffle, defensive slide, that sort of thing to each cone, and then get, always getting back to the center. Okay, so we'll do a few here just so you can see what I mean. All right, ready? Here. Good. Back. Good. Here. Back. Back. Nice. Back. Good, here, here, and rest, good, <laughs> nice job. So you can see how great this drill is, you know, if, especially if a team is, is moving the ball around, the perimeter, things like that, you need to react, adjust quickly, and then get back to your position. So this is a great drill just, again, for that change of direction type of movement. Uh, another way to, to do the same drill is I'm going to take the the hand away and I'm just going to give her now an audible cue. So the cones, if you can see my hand, just because this is fun for me, is this is going to be one, back there will be number two, back corner is number three, and over here is number four. So I'm just going to give her a number. I may point to try and throw her off, <laughs> but she's just supposed to react to the audible cue, okay? We learn different ways, visually, audibly, and a couple other ways. But So this is more of an audible technique. Uh, same drill, just, just giving her some different feedback. All right, ready? Two. <laughs> Two. Good. One. There you go. Good. Four. That's it. Good. Four. Nice. One. Three. Three. And rest. Good. So you see when we provide some different stimuli how, how it gets a little bit more challenging for her. But this box, really simple. I mean, you don't need cones. You could put, you know, shoes out. You could use the paint uh, as, as, the, uh, as the box. You just need one person to provide some, um, some, some cues, have that person in the middle just react to those. And this drill should typically last about 10 to 15 seconds, and I would have each person go through three or four times. All right, gang, last one we're going to show. There's another one in the quickness section. Um, these are kind of more 
fun drills to do, but, but they definitely have their place. Uh, they're definitely educational and, and are useful uh, for just about every sport, but especially basketball where there's a lot of um, reaction taking place in a short space. Uh, so this can take place, you could have two people again in the paint um, doing this drill. So we have a little uh, box squared off here. And the first one, we're gonna do two. We're gonna do a mirror drill and then we're gonna do a tag drill. So the mirror drill is gonna be pretty straightforward. Lauren's going to be my mirror. For about 10 to 15 seconds, she has to do everything that I do. So if I do a backflip, she's going to do a backflip. Uh, handstands, she's doing handstands. But you'll, you'll, you'll get the idea. And then after that, we'll reverse it. So we'll have, uh, I'll be Lauren's mirror. So I'll do everything that she does. So that's the mirror drill. The second one is going to be the, a tag, a game of tag, basically. The key, or the, the trick is that we're both it. So I'm trying to tag Lauren, and Lauren's trying to tag me at the same time. So you try to tag your opponent without getting tagged. And you'll kind of see how challenging that actually can be. Uh, so the, for the mirror drill, usually do that one for about 10 to 15 seconds. Each person goes. Do that two rounds. And then for the tag drill, uh, or tag game, I usually have, you know, first person to five wins, something like that. All right? So we'll just show you a few seconds of each. You can watch me kick Lauren's butt. All right? <laughs> Go <laughs> mirror drill, ready? Thank <laughs> you. 